Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Real Hero Show. You got Corey and Nick with you here, as always. And in today's episode, we are going to be reviewing, with spoilers, episode 12 of The Bad Batch, entitled Rescue on Ryloth. Uh, Nick, it is it's another Friday, man. We've, we've made it through another week, which means we get some more Bad Batch. We, we did. Uh, thankful it is Friday. More Bad Batch. Good episode today. Um, I'm still on the high from from Kang. I was gonna say, how many times uh, have you watched that episode now? <laughs> not enough. Not enough. I can't, All right. I can't get enough of it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're here to talk about Star Wars for, for a slight change. Well, if you thought this show was bad, just wait until you see our variants. I think that should be like our new catchphrase. Our our variants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. So this episode uh, is kind of like part two of a two-parter from from last week's episode that introduced right. uh, a young Harrison Dula on Ryloth. Right. Um, end of last episode, there was an assassination attempt on uh, Ornfri Ta, who's their senator. Uh, they blame it on Hera's parents. They get tossed in jail. And that's where this episode starts. Uh, Hera reaches out to the Bad Batch because Omega uh, gave them, gave their... Uh, I don't even know their coordinates or whatever they refer to it as. Um, to Hera, Hera reached out, sent him a little Princess Leia style, you're my only hope thing. Uh, Bad Batch went down to, to Ryloth and fun adventure stuff happened there. So um, mm. first first talking point, I mean, the whole episode was basically a giant action sequence, right? So um, right. they did the typical Star Wars Return of the Jedi Rogue One style thing where they had three different groups. Uh, so I think you had... Uh, Hunter and Tick Hunter and on, on one team. Right. Uh, you had uh, oh no, it was it was Hunter and Echo on one team. Echo, it was Echo, yeah. Tick Tick and Rika on another yeah. team, yeah. and then Omega and Hira were were the third team, and they were with Chopper, right. who Chopper just made me laugh a ton. Dude, I, Chopper, I love Chopper. <laughs> so, uh, what you mentioned Great. last week about Chopper, and I think right, Dave Filoni himself said every word that chopper says is essentially a curse word pretty much yeah <laughs> um so for those of you that don't like cursing um uh, i'm going to reference something that i heard in this episode that i could totally see where dave filoni was was correct about this or even jokingly correct about this um when chopper is going down like the ship steps or whatever mm -hmm. in the ramp and it sounds like he's saying fuck 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 fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> and i'm just like i can't i can't unhear it now because yeah. of what dave filoni said like every time i'm an, every time chopper says something i'm going to think what is he actually saying what does it sound like he's yep. saying that is you know uh something that is swear worthy and <laughs> i heard that and i was like oh my god I think he's right. Like, I love it. <laughs> son of a I gun. Just, like, I love this little subculture oh of, of droid speak and like Nava computers just having ridiculous attitudes in Star Wars and just being fed up with all of it and being like, all these humans are stupid. <laughs> well, like even, I mean, even we kind of get, we get a little taste of that in the original uh, original trilogy when yeah. Repo is talking to the Nava computer on the Falcon. Mm -hmm. And you know he makes a comment of how how rude she is, um, yeah. right? So it's like, well, yeah, we we don't know droid talk to a certain extent, but yep. um, who's to say that they aren't uh, being very aggressive with their words? Yeah, it, it sounds <laughs> yeah. like cute noises to us, but uh... like in uh, in in uh, right before Jabba's palace, when the little eyeball eyeball droid goes <laughs> Ijuta. Like yep. C3PO, right? So yeah, Ichuta is my favorite. How how yeah. that has become kind of just like the toss off kind of <laughs> yeah in Star Wars. It's it's great. So um, yep. I, I thought all that action was was super fun. Um, yeah, it was the way the way they cut it was great. Um, you know, seeing Hera finally fly a ship. Yeah, um, which she wasn't great at it the first time, but no. you know where her character goes in Rebels, she turns into an outstanding pilot. Feelings, um, pretty pretty cool stuff. You get the the, the Rebels feels there, which is nice. Um, the tech had a great line where he was like, "You're, you know, all of your movements are very dangerous and confusing, so that's good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It made me made me laugh a little bit. The, yeah, he's like the good. Drax of the Bad Batch. He plays yes. everything so so straight but it's 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 very humorous at the same time yeah. so um yeah so you got like a little bit of not necessarily dog fighting in space because they didn't really leave the planet but you got the the, sh the actual ships you got stuff blowing up you also had the 
you know, the typical uh, hallway type stuff. Star Wars loves their hallways. So yep, um, they do to break somebody out of prison. Star Wars loves breaking people out of prison. So uh, <laughs> they, they hit on a lot of the, the tropes, but it was it was yep. super fun. Uh, yep. Animation looked just ridiculous. Stellar. Again, as always, I, yeah. I, man, Chopper so looks season. so good in these two episodes. Like, oh yeah compared to him. what we know of him absolutely outrageous so mm. um yeah so you know they go through all that and uh the episode ends with uh captain hauser letting them know uh that crosshair's battalion is out there waiting for him so they get mm. to pop upstairs they get on the senator's ship and they they fly away and hauser goes out there and kind of takes one on the nose for uh for Champs and Dula and, and for the citizens of Ryloth. Yeah. Pretty cool, considering he's still technically microchipped. Yeah, he's still right? a, a reg. You know, yeah. they, they all are for the most so, part. But... Um, that's an interesting idea is that, you know, now that we're sometime post Order 66, can these guys start thinking for themselves or or what? I, I don't know. But um, yeah, a few of the a few of the troopers threw down their weapons and then Crosshair Squad came out and arrested them for treason so um interesting conflict between uh troops in the empire which could start leading us more into the phasing out of the clones and bringing in the traditional stormtroopers that we get by the time uh we get to solo and rogue one and and eventually obviously a new hope so right. um pretty cool stuff there uh yeah. obviously Hera's family gets away um I, I was surprised. I, I don't know about you. But I thought that Hera's mom was going to bite the dust here. Yeah, I, th I thought this was going to be the episode uh, because it definitely had um, you know a darker feel to it. Um, not just from the setting being dark itself, but um, it kind of felt like th that's where it was going to go or that yep. she wasn't going to make it. Um, but uh, so I don't know if that's maybe to come in the next episode or sometime later this season. Like maybe oh, I, I kind of hope not. We've only got four left and I, yeah. I want these four to be like laser focused on on the Bad Batch and their story. Uh, well, I wonder if maybe now that Crossfire has permission to um, hunt them. Yeah. She becomes collateral uh, in the pursuit Yep. and just bites the dust um i mean because obviously crosshair doesn't give a crap and no. <laughs> it's like oh if i have to shoot you just to get to them i will do it he'll because he'll uh, do good soldiers follow orders um uh which again i i thought that like that that's an interesting line to take into consideration based on um you know the slight uh stand up to the empire we saw at the mm -hmm. end there with with hazard and, and his troops right yep and because it's like you've got a bunch of regs and then crossfire says you know arrest those traitors and mm -hmm. you know and then the other regs come in and arrest you, the other regs like you do it's a pretty like, good crosshair You're, oh yeah that's that's pretty hey, d bradley baker let's go that's pretty um, solid i, I like yeah. it but it's it's cool you mentioned that because uh earlier on in the episode crosshair has a conversation with uh officer or admiral rampart uh, right and he's like hey Clone Force 99 is here. And he throws they're... like the little iPad on the table. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. like angrily throws it. Um, yeah. And then he was like, yeah, they'll be dealt with. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, you just, you stay focused on on Hera and, and her family. And he's like, all right, whatever. How'd that and then go, by, the, by the end of the episode, Rampart's like, I have clearly underestimated your former friends. <laughs> yeah. and, and Crosshair says, you know, permission to hunt him down. And Rampart says permission granted, which hopefully uh, this this will be the, the catalyst for the four remaining episodes of the show. Yeah. Um, makes me think yeah. that there's not much hope for Crosshair to, to turn back to the, the light side on this one. I, I feel like he's kind of too far gone uh, working for the Empire. Yeah, I think at this point in the season with only uh, four episodes left, which I, I kind of hope is um, maybe a little bit similar to how season seven of the Clone Wars were, uh, was with these last the last four episodes were uh, obviously like parts one, two, three, four. Right. I'm not saying they need to be called parts one, two, three, and four, but just obviously seem like a four part episode right. um, you know, connection. And uh, I, yeah, I doubt he'll he'll 
turn back or, or anything of the sorts. So if there's a second season of Bad Batch, you know, maybe, but I don't expect him to get killed off either. Um, I think I, I don't I hope not. And I, I don't expect any of the Bad Batch uh, characters to get, you know, removed uh, in, in any way, shape, or form. I could be wrong. Um, again, yeah. I, I guess it really depends on how Filoni's wanting to do this, or uh, maybe he knows something we don't, and there is a second season coming, and yeah. um, so there's no reason to go to that length. Uh, again, maybe the dramatic part is seeing Hera's mom bite the dust. Yeah, maybe. And I mean, it kind of feels like they, they haven't killed a lot of people in this like it it seemed like yeah. they've come close like cad yeah. bane shot hunter but hunter didn't die right crosshair shot horn free ta but it, we found out in this episode that he didn't die right uh, i thought that Hera's mom was gonna die she didn't i thought that crosshair was gonna shoot captain hauser when he came out there all on his own and started giving his little yeah freedom little... speech i, I thought gonna get i thought like mid sentence during that thing he was just gonna get got and fall yeah. down didn't yeah. happen. So I, I don't know if this show is uh, afraid to take people out or if they're just saving stuff for, for later to kind of tear our hearts out, but um, we shall see. We only got four episodes left. Uh, yeah, I'm curious. So, I'm but curious. I, one thing I did find interesting was Crosshair uses the words hunt the batch, right? Like he wants to hunt after them. Right. But Rampart says right before that, something along the lines of how great would it be if they were working for us? So I wonder if Crosshair's mission is not necessarily going to be to just terminate them and, and get rid of them, but capture them so that maybe like a chip can get re-implanted into their heads and then they can do the bidding of the Empire. Because hmm. um, you know how Imperial officers are. Every single one, whether it's Rampart or Krennic or Tarkin or any of those guys, all they're trying to do is be on the Emperor's good graces and move up within the Empire. That's oh like, yeah. They'll yeah. all double cross each other to get closer to to Palpatine and Vader. So right. We'll we'll see what happens there, but um, I think it'll be a very interesting four episode thing. And I like your idea of making it kind of like the end of season seven, where it's almost like a one big linear story. We've had right a handful of kind of offshoots in the middle part of this Bad Batch season. And I'm hoping to to bring it home that these last four episodes almost kind of play out like a movie of sorts, the same way that the the end of Clone Wars did. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be cool to see. And you know, again, I I kind of wonder where um, Hera will end up as well. You know, I, I, like because yeah. there's this you know obvi uh, obvious gap between now and then Rebels. Uh, to where where is a kid with a French accent to being, you know, um, a little bit more grown and not a French accent. So, um, same thing, like where, where do the bad batch members go? Where does, uh, Omega go? I don't know. You know, That's so the one that scares I, me the most is what happens to Omega. Cause she's, yeah. she's not in any of this other stuff, which yeah, kind of makes you wonder. It's like, it's like the Grogu thing, right? It's like, where's, where's Grogu by the time, the force awakens happens is he is right he gone did he go away did he die like he's clearly just not there um yeah, so you, it'll, it'll you, be interesting you butt in another kid and it's like <laughs> right star wars so you there... keep bringing in kids that everybody falls in love with <laughs> yeah and, and then we don't know what happens to them they killed younglings you know so <laughs> it's like they're, they're not afraid to kill kids. No, so. yeah. I mean, f for the dark side, you know, so it's, yeah. Yeah, again, like, uh, highly possible. Yeah. Um, Makes me wonder, you think there's a chance, like, in these four episodes, we could see, like, a Vader or an Inquisitor or, you know, do you think there's a chance that we could see Hera and Kanan meet for the first time before this series ends? Like, I, they opened up all those threads. I mean, there's, there's yeah. a possibility of it happening. Yeah, like I, 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 I think it would really, it would be cool to see some sort of connection again. Like, this is how they sort of just uh, the, how the how the past starts, leading to rebels. Because right. um, I, I feel like that's all this is really doing is it's further connecting the dots from 
uh, Clone Wars to Bad Batch to, to to Rebels because it's like, well, we just know that Rebels comes after Clone Wars, but where's the connectivity there? Yep. Um, this is the bridge. This, this yeah. So shows. if if the Bad Batch this series is the bridge, right? So yep. um, that'll be cool to see and how it plays out. But uh, yeah, because uh, Chopper's got to go with Hera, so. Mm-hmm. You know, we've already seen three three members yeah. of I guess if you want to include Rex as well. Yeah, actually uh, Rex becomes part of the de facto team later yeah. on in, in Rebels. I mean I wouldn't be surprised, especially if this show got a second season, if yeah. they didn't catch up with Zeb and a younger Sabine and maybe not Ezra, because when you meet Ezra in Rebels, he's so young and he's not like indoctrinated into this whole thing yet, but like the rest of the yeah. ghost crew they're already out doing stuff fighting a good fight when you when that show starts so um it, it's a definite possibility i would love to to see some mandalore stuff maybe maybe catch up with bo katan again um a younger bo katan maybe yeah you know you, you got her at the end of uh clone wars oh she's not really that young at that so, point yeah so um, it's post all the stuff with with maul and and all his followers it, who knows? Maybe we could even see Maul because Maul's still he's still farting around the galaxy at this point, causing chaos and whatnot, too. So, yeah, I'd be curious. Maybe yeah, get some uh, Sam Witwer action in there. So yeah, I know I, he's I would... down. Star Wars calls him and he's like, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I I would be all for that yeah. just, just to see again. Like, not, not like, We said this before about Ahsoka, not to take away from the Bad Batch with mm-hmm. with Ahsoka or anything along those lines, but for the sake of just furthering the story if maul needs to make an appearance for something like maybe the bad batch come into contact with maul and they're like we're not we're not messing with you we know about the jedi <laughs> yeah because um, you know they're mercenaries now so maybe they get a call to do a job from they maul. show up and and maul's there and they're like oh no <laughs> a call from maul a call yeah. from maul to do that's, yeah, uh, so that you never means... know. the The possibilities are kind of endless. They Star Wars has has stuffed this time period between three and four so much that yeah, um, there are a ton of characters that they could they could run into. Um, I'd like to see Sabine though too. Yeah, I, yeah, that, that would Sabine's be... awesome. So that'd be that'd be great. But that'd be cool. Um, so how would you score this episode? Uh, and does it impact how you felt about last week's episode? Now that you know, it's kind of like a, a two-parter with the conclusion. Yeah, I think it furthers last week's episode. Um, I want to say I gave last week a 7.5. Um, so I I think it you know, impacted last week more. Uh, and I, I definitely liked this this episode more than last week. Um, so like I, I'll give this one a solid 8 for sure. Okay. Um, you know, so better improved furthers uh and i, I just a slight thing i'll add i, I love the ending of the episode but yeah. the, the music it's great that is happening when when crosshairs says and asks permission to hunt the bad batch our clone force 99 and it's, it's ominous. just yeah very ominous and creepy i'm like man that, i need to listen to the soundtrack more and then and then it hits that fanfare when the credits hit yeah, it's I, I love that. It's, it's yeah. good stuff. The the Kiner family has done a, a terrific job with the, the music on this one. So um, yeah. I think I'm in the same boat. Solid, solid eight. Uh, I think it ended up being a nice little two part arc. Yeah, uh, a little backstory on Hera and her family, um, which kind of informs some of the stuff that happens in Rebels, which is super cool. So happy for it. Uh, however, uh, like I said before, I'm really hoping that these final four episodes are just like foot on the gas all the way from yep. here until the end bring it back in make it about crosshair versus the batch and and the empire uh and then we'll go from there so yep. uh that's gonna do it for us this week uh, guys we've had a lot of stuff happen it's been wonderful uh we can't wait for next week to see what happened ted lasso premieres next week ted lasso um, everyone 
I am begrudgingly going to <laughs> review this show alongside Nick. It is not my favorite show on TV, <laughs> uh, contrary to everybody else. But um, before we get into that next week, we'd love for you guys to drop us a comment below. Let us know what you thought about this episode of The Bad yes. Batch and the series so far and where you think it's going in those final four episodes. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so for free. Just got to like this video, subscribe, turn on those notifications and share with your friends. Uh, we will be back next week. We have no idea what we're going to talk about because a lot of our shows keep ending um but we'll definitely have bad batch on friday and the the rest is a mystery so any suggestions hit us up <laughs> yeah hit us up let us know what you want us to talk about and maybe we'll just make that video so uh, yeah. until next time we'll see you guys in the next video peace